So today I'm going to show you guys how to recreate Nick Smith's paint swatch art style uh, in Photoshop. So this is going to be a very really quick tutorial. It is a long process, um, so I'll try to go as quick as possible and make it as simple to understand as possible. So first you want to actually pick your image. So you're going to want to pick uh, something, an item, a landscape, something that's very recognizable. The issue is if you pick like a picture of yourself, for example, um, you're going to have to make it very detailed uh, or have a lot of paint swatches in order to be able to tell what it is. What's nice about, for example, the Mona Lisa, that even though there's very little detail, everything's super blurry, it's such a recognizable painting um, that despite lacking all the detail, you know exactly what it is. So for example, Homer Simpson is probably the world's most popular cartoon dad, so it's a very recognizable character. So a good way to see what it would look like before you start, if you go under Filter, Pixelate, Mosaic, uh, you can see what it would look like. Now, log I, like logically, um, the smaller cell sizes and the most cells you have, the closer to the original image it will be, and the more recognizable it will be. Now keep in mind, every single pixel would refer to one paint swatch. So the smaller you go, the more paint swatches you'd have to make. So there'd probably be thousands in this one. So to make your life easy, you want to go as far down this column that you can and where you could still actually recognize what it is. Now the issue with Homer Simpson you see um, is because, and you'll face this with a lot of cartoons, because they use solid colors, um, all of these yellow, for example the arms, the forehead, uh, they're all the same yellow. Same with his beard down here. With paint swatches, if they're the same color, if they're the same value, they have the same name. So logically, all these paint swatches would just be repeating themselves over and over. So you lose that unique uh, unique thing that his paintings, or sorry, that his art has, um, that Nick Smith has all these unique paint swatches going through the whole, the whole art piece, because here you just have them repeating. That's just something to think about. Um, some people won't mind, but uh, personally, I like them if they're all different. So here, uh, is the world record egg. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's the most liked Instagram post in the world uh, at over 52 million likes at the moment. Um, what's nice about this is because it's not a cartoon, it has different, it has shading, has different colors everywhere. So again, if I go pixelate mosaic, uh, you can actually see what it would look like with different cell sizes. What's nice about this is even if you go like to the max and you ask someone who has no clue what it is, what they think it is, they're probably going to say, I don't know, an egg, which at the end of the day is totally right. It's just an egg. Um, so I'm going to use this uh, for my project for the tutorial, just because it's going to be a very simple thing to do. Um, and what's nice about this one is you can have very high cell sizes and still be able to recognize it. So I think I'm going to go, uh, let's see, let's see, 84. That's what I'm going to stick with. Well, let's go from there. So once you picked what you're going to do, um, so I have two layers. I have the regular one and then I have the one with the actual uh, mosaic effect on it. So the next step is you want to create a grid. Uh, so we can just use the line tool. Um, and so essentially these don't have to line up. This is just so you can get an idea of what to do. Um, so you want to create your two lines, uh, so that's pretty close actually. So that's good. So let's say that's what I want, that's how big I want every one of my paint swatches to be. Um, so now if you hold Alt, you can just drag it down and you actually want to leave a little gap between it. Um, now this, the gap is up to you, but see once you have that, uh, you just want to keep repeating that. So hit Alt again, hold Shift, uh, and you want to make sure that the gap between them are the same. There we go. Uh, and again, there we go. Essentially, the gap between those two grids is just where the actual name of the, the color is going to go. So then you just want to keep repeating that. Once you're done the horizontal lines of your grid, uh, you can grab the last two lines. Um, which mine are on one layer, 
with, with that one, you can hit duplicate. Uh, and with all the other ones, you can hit convert to smart object. That just cleans up your layers over here. Uh, so with the one you just duplicated, rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, put it on the edge of your object, or if it takes the whole image, you could put it up to, against the side. I don't need to do that in my case. So then you want to hit Alt and Shift again. You want to make sure they line up. Uh, let's see, yeah, those are lined up. I select both. Hit Alt and Shift again. Uh, those are good. Select all four. That should be good. Uh, let's see. The last four aren't quite lined up. Is that better? I didn't change anything. There we go. So I moved over the grid a little bit, um, just to center it better on the real picture. Uh, and I cleaned up the layers over here. Uh, I just put it into one smart object. Uh, so now we're ready to actually start making the paint swatches. Next step is to actually use the magic wand tool. You want to select your grid. You want to make sure it's all in one layer. Uh, so you want to select your first square. You might be starting from the top right corner. I'll just start from here because I just have to make the actual egg. You want to go, then you, once you have that selected on your grid layer, you want to go down to your actual image layer. You want to go filter, blur, average. Then you want to go back up, select the next one, go back down. Filter, blur, average. Go back up, select next one, go back down. What you can do is you could use a shortcut, which it says up here. Either you can click it here, which is a little bit faster, or uh, you can do the, the keyboard shortcut, which is Alt, eh, Alt Control F. Uh, that's just a little bit faster. So here, this is the most time consuming part. Um, but using the keyboard shortcuts definitely speeds things up. Now, you don't have to do the, the rectangles between the squares. Um, you can leave those alone. Oh, see here, I did on the wrong fill, on the wrong layer. Once you've done all your selections and all your squares are done, uh, again, using the magic wand tool, you want to select, oops, you want to go on your grid layer and you want to select all the squares you've just done uh, and then go back down to your your drawing layer and then you what you want to do is you want to hit Control J. Essentially what that does is it adds the same line that you've just done uh, onto its own layer. Now it doesn't actually remove it from the original so this is non-destructive which is good. Um, basically you want to keep repeating that with again make sure you're on the grid layer um, using one line at a time. Then here Control J. Now, again, go across, back down, control J. You want to do that for all of them, one stripe at a time. So once that's all done and you have each horizontal layer put on its own layer, uh, you can remove the grid as well as the, the base layer. And here you go. So now you have all your, your colors for each paint sample done. That was, I would say, the most difficult part. Um, now here comes the part that's going to take the longest. So here's where you actually uh, add the text to make it look like a paint sample. So I just condensed all of, uh, all of those layers into one because now comes the part of actually putting in the text under each one of these colors. Uh, obviously the more squares you have to do, the more layers it's going to make, the longer it's going to take. So just to make sure that uh, I, I don't have too many layers at once. I've condensed that. So now using your text tool, uh, you're actually gonna wanna go under every single one of these squares and ideally put a unique name for each one of these. Um, you wanna do, so what he, refer, he refers to this as psychology, so like psychology and color. Essentially what each and every one of these individual colors make you think of, the, I, the way I see it is the first thing it makes me think of is what, is what I'll put. So for example, eggshell. Zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, so eggshell. 
let's say this one makes me think of the beach, so I'll put sand or something like that. So the font I use is Helvetica. Um, right now I'm using a 9 font, but it's a little blurry. I mean, that's not a problem to me because it's going to be zoomed out, but if if you find that you don't like that, what you can do before actually um, before actually writing it is if you go under image, you can go image size and you can just make this bigger. So you want to make sure that this little link here is uh, is pressed down so that the aspect ratio is uh, stays the same. So let's say I make this 2000 instead. Now the picture itself is a little bit bigger. Um, because these are all solid square colors, uh, it won't get really much blurrier. But see, so now the 9 font is even smaller. So, you know, maybe I'd be happier with uh, an 11 font right now. And so, eggshell. And now I'm going to have to do that for each and every one of these. Uh, once you do that, you do want to try to align it as best as possible with, uh, with this, the left hand side of each square. Um, and then ideally they'd all have the same spacing. Um, and so you can, if you want, you can use guides to, uh, to help you align those. Um, but, but yeah, here comes the long task of doing that. So once you've put all the text, you can see it's really starting to come together. Um, so that's how it looked before. Uh, so now these do actually look like paint swatches. Um, the last step uh, is to actually tilt some of these. So because Nick Smith um, makes these all by hand, uh, they aren't all perfectly lined up in a grid like this. So you're just going to want to tilt some of these really gently. Um, and the way we're going to do that is we're actually, uh, we can duplicate these layers. Um, these ones we can hide and then the top ones we can merge. The only reason I, I like to duplicate them is so, uh, it's non-destructive. And then you're going to want to grab, uh, the rec rectangular marquee tool. And then you're going to want to zoom in and you can just select one, uh, like this. Uh, hit Control T, and then you can just tilt them a little bit. Now you don't want to do anything drastic, um, but just like that, uh, you can see makes it look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more manual, like it hasn't been done all on the computer. Um, so we'll just do another one over here. Now you don't want to do it with all of these, um, and don't want to tilt them too much. Um, but see just a little bit and as you keep doing it, you'll see uh, it really comes together eventually Once you're done tilting them all you're pretty much done One thing is that Nick Smith's art the borders are all pretty even around um, So for example here the border is thicker um, Around the sides than it is up and down so what you can do is you can, to fix that is you can go image canvas size uh, and you can just mess with these. Um, you don't have to keep relative on. Um, but you know, I'm happy with this. I like the fact that it's just a square, so I'm gonna stick with that. So finally, the only thing left is you pretty much just sign the bottom right corner. And other than that, you're done. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, and have a nice day.